So as 2020 is starting to draw to a close, I thought it'd be a quite a nice idea to kind of make a video recapping my top 5 favourite games of the past year. We all know it's been quite a weird and wacky year, but from a gaming standpoint, I think it has been a, a pretty good year. Now this list is just my personal opinion of the games that I enjoyed this year. Um, there was more games that came out this year, uh, and I'm not saying that they're bad games at all, these are just the top 5 that I enjoyed the most. Uh, you're entitled to disagree with them and everything, you can let me know in the comment section below if you disagree with my list, that is perfectly fine, but these are my top 5 favourite games of 2020. So at the number 5 spot for my top 5 favourite games of 2020, I actually put Watch Dogs Legion. Now if you've never played Watch Dogs, basically the whole premise of it is you're in a open world city, um, this is actually the third game in the instalment, so this one is actually set in uh, London in the future. Uh, the first game was set in Chicago and the second one was set in San Francisco and uh, basically the whole premise is open world uh, technology is at its peak you know uh, you have a phone you have a special phone which can hack traffic lights you can control cars you can set off people's uh, phones and they'll check it and that's good for stealth you can hack cameras to get a reconnaissance on places you have stuff at your disposal such as drones and stuff like that and I think this game is it captures what's best about Watch Dogs. Now, personally, in my opinion, from a story aspect and a sort of world building aspect, I actually think Watch Dogs 2 is much better. I actually think Watch Dogs 2 is the best out of the three games. And honestly, that is actually one of my favorite games I've ever played is Watch Dogs 2. But I think what Watch Dogs Legion does well is uh, it improves on what, what uh, Watch Dogs 2 introduced. So like gadgets and hacking cars and stuff like that, there's much more freedom in Watch Dogs Legion. But another thing I really like about Watch Dogs Legion is the whole recruitment thing. In Watch Dogs 1, you were limited to playing as Aiden Pierce, and you could play as um, other people in DLC, and that is the same in Watch Dogs 2 actually, I'm pretty sure. Watch Dogs 2 you play as Marcus, and actually there is parts of the game you do play as other people, but for the most part you are limited to Marcus, and it is based around him. In Watch Dogs Legion, there is not really a main playable character. There are main characters who interact with the story. You've got like uh, Budley, I believe his name is. I can't remember. I've not played Watch Dogs in a few weeks. Um, the AI who basically is like a sort of like an Amazon Alexa sort of thing who helps you out and everything. So he's a main character, but there is no actual playable main character. Uh, you're limited to playing as, well, sorry, you're, you're hardly limited. You actually have to, you know, recruit people off the street and they all have different aspects. That's what makes it really fun. Um, there's one you can, you know, recruit a London guard and you can enter restricted areas such as Buckingham Palace. Uh, you can recruit a, a living statue who's in full gold and if he's get, you're getting chased by the police, you can go stand at a corner and then pretend to be a statue and they won't see you. Um, all these different aspects, you can play as a construction worker who has access to this drone which you can stand on and get to places where some other people would struggle to get to it and you also have your own weapons you know like i said the construction worker has like a staple gun and all these different things you can get like a street artist who has a paintball gun the variety is so good um the game kind of drags down purely because i think the story was it was all right but it was a bit weak and i think the world building wasn't as good as Watch Dogs 2 but it was still an incredible game and uh, yeah that's why i put it in number five on my list so number four on my list, which I think people would probably maybe disagree with and put higher, I actually put Ghost of Tsushima. Now I know for many people this was their game of the year and everything, and yeah, it, it's a great game. Um, it looks beautiful. I enjoyed the gameplay. I enjoyed the the open world of this, um, you know, Japan. It was very fun. It was very beautiful. I really liked the mood that this game gave off. It was, to me personally, playing it, it felt like a modern day version of me playing Ocarina of Time all the way back on the GameCube when I was like four or five years old because I was very young. Um, I'm only 18 so you know uh, I don't really have a massive history with games but I did play it on my older sister's um, you know old GameCube and stuff like that and games like Ocarina of Time I really felt the same feeling uh, in this game than I did when I was playing that back in the day and that's honestly what I would compare it to. If you ever played Ocarina of Time, this feels like it. You're in this massive, you know, open world. You, it, it's not full of buildings. It's not full of all these random NPCs everywhere. It's you, your horse. You've got these little villages and these big strongholds and everything, which are full of action. And but you've got this massive, you know, beautiful open world with stuff to explore. 
um, you know, big mountains to climb, challenges to get up to those mountains, you get armor as reward. Uh, it's so interesting, you know, discovering this world and all the world building that's in it. And uh, stealth is fun, you know, combat is very good, it's very in-depth, there's different stances for different enemies if there's someone with a shield you must change your stance to fight them if there's more of a brute enemy you must change your stance and they're all the different things you unlock where you can all these special abilities and stuff like that which you learn from discovering the history of that you know um that ability uh, to unlock that it's it's very interesting and it's just an all-round very fun game and people probably wonder why i didn't put it higher and it's just because I enjoyed the other games more, but I enjoyed the hell out of Ghost of Tsushima, and if you have a PlayStation console, 100% pick this game up. It is an incredible game, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's a very good game. I highly recommend it. So that is number four on my list. Now, number three on my list, I actually put the brand new Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now, I was a big fan of the original Spider-Man game on the PS4. I thought it was great. Um, I really don't have issue with them changing Peter Parker's face. You really don't see it that much and I don't really care. I think people are overreacting about stuff like that. But I was very excited when they announced that the Miles Morales spin-off game was going to come out. Um, you know, Miles is one of the best New Age Marvel characters. I am a big fan of Miles as a character and stuff like that. And um, playing as him in a game is going to be great, especially with how fun the first game was. This game was also going to be fun. And it was. Um, story is a bit short. I was expecting it to be not as long as the main game because this isn't the second game. This is more of a spin off, sort of uh, similar to in scope of Uncharted The Lost Legacy to how that was to Uncharted 4. And I thought this game done very well. This was the first game I purchased for my PS5, so I got to experience it at 60 frames per second. I could experience um, loading times that were near instant. I was, you know, from the PlayStation menu into the game itself took about, you know, less than 10 seconds. Um, the gameplay is very good. The story is very good. It's very enjoyable. Uh, any Marvel fan, any just good video game fan will love this game. Um, I'm not really sure how it played on PlayStation 4 because I don't even own my PS4 anymore. Uh, but I assume the game was still very good. Uh, I assume it ran very well still for a last gen game. Uh, another thing, the haptic triggers on PS5 were very fun with this game. The way swinging through the city and uh, the triggers changing when you're pulling back your web and stuff like that um, was very fun. Uh, it was very immersive and you know the game running very smooth, running very fast. Uh, PS5 is a silent console as well. I got to experience the game very good uh, and enjoy it, you know, the way it should be. So um, that is number three on my list. Okay, so my second favorite game of the year was actually Doom Eternal. Now, this was the first Doom game I've actually ever played, and it makes me want to go back and play the older ones that I've missed out on. This game is so fun. Um, I knew Doom was a popular franchise before it, but actually playing this, and I've seen a lot of people say this is like, you know, the best game in the, in the franchise and it can only get better from here. Um, it was very fun, you know, it was just a progressive level, shoot them up, you know, you got all these really cool gadgets, you've got all these different enemy types and stuff like that, and it was just fun to sit down and play, you know, I don't have to worry about other players, I don't really have to worry about the story as much, it does have a story, but for the most part, the best part about this game is just the whole shoot them up. Um, shoot these demons with all these different weapons, you know, the, the shotgun with the chain on it where you can like grapple yourself to an enemy and then shoot them as you're flying into them. It is genuinely so enjoyable to play that game. It's so satisfying uh, when you're using your chainsaw, you know, use the chainsaw to get your ammo and health back and everything. It is just such a fun game. If you guys, you know, get this game on discount or something, I highly recommend it. It's just so fun. It, it, it That is it. The whole core of this game is that it's just fun. It's not got the best story ever. It's not got insane graphics. Graphics are good though. It's not got, you know, emotional characters. It's just an extremely fun game. Just shooting demons, progressing through these levels, finding little hidden bits, getting all the achievements and stuff like that. It's just extremely fun. And if you have been looking for a game like that, Doom Eternal is literally one of the best games that came out this year for that reason. And I highly recommend getting it. So yeah, that is number two on my list. And finally, my favourite game of 2020, and I know there will be people who will disagree about this and instantly dislike the video when I say this, but it has to be, without a doubt, The Last of Us Part 2. Now, I could sit and talk about The Last of Us Part 2 for hours, I could explain so much how I liked about it. I made a review when I first got the game a few months ago and that's still up on his channel if you want to check that out. But from a standpoint, I, I just love it. 
the story is incredible in my opinion um the graphics are in insane you know rockstar and naughty dog when it comes to graphics they are near picture perfect incredible um the gameplay was fun the zombie and stealth with the clickers and stuff like that and the everything it was so good i i was enjoying myself so much and honestly this is one of my favorite games of all time uh i want to kind of give a brief reason of why i like the story so much uh, and i don't want to go into it fully unlike i did in my last of us to review but for me i think it represents so well of what the first game done and living off the consequences of the first game now in the first last of us we saw joel you know uh, an angry, uh, kind of selfish man who lost his daughter and he's just trying to make his way in this post-apocalyptic world. And then he obviously meets Ellie who he, you know, is not really happy with at first. He just sees her as a nuisance, stuff like that. But over time he sees his daughter more and more in her and she, she becomes sort of a daughter figure to this man who lost his daughter and he was, you know, he needed something like that in his life. And I see a lot of complaints about Last of Us 2 saying Joel in the first game, you know, he wouldn't let his guard down like he did in the second game and stuff like that. But I think there's so many visuals that represent where Joel was in that time. In the first game, like I said at the beginning, he was an angry man. He had something massive missing from his life, which Ellie filled, uh, causing him to change his whole, you know, outlook on the world. He traveled across America. They were gonna find the. Uh, they were gonna, you know, you know, kill Ellie to get the to get the vaccine for the for the, the virus to try and save people. And Joel doesn't want to lose Ellie like he lost Sarah. You know, he he couldn't save Sarah at the beginning of the first game. That is something that sh which he regrets and he dreads. Now that he has a chance to save Ellie. He saves her, and in doing so, he kills a surgeon who is actually the father of Abby, who we learn and play as in the second game. So the moment Joel changed his mind and went to go save Ellie and killed those fireflies and killed those surgeons, he, he basically gave his life for hers. It was inevitable that he was going to get, you know, consequences. And I don't know why people were so surprised in the second game why Joel was killed by Abby. And I think the reason why in the beginning of the second game where he lets his guard down and everything is because he had no reason to have his guard up. In the first game, he was so on edge all the time because he didn't have that thing completing him. And that thing that was completing him was Sarah. And then when she dies, he was incomplete. Now, in the second game, Ellie has completed him. This man doesn't, you know, need to go around, gun at the ready, being mean to people, shooting on sight. In the beginning of the second game, he has a guitar at the very beginning. He sings and plays the guitar. That is nothing like the character we see in the first game who is ruthless and will shoot people at first sight. This man has went past that stage he has got what he wanted he is this daughter that he had lost for so long now in ellie and that was that weakness of him becoming a whole person which inadvertently got him killed by letting his guard down and he was killed by him his own consequence abby is a great character and honestly one of the best parts of the game uh people need to look past the fact that she kills joel he i love joel I have a bunch of merchandise of Joel in my room and everything. He's an incredible character, one of the best characters in gaming. But Abby was justified in killing him. He killed her father. She was one of the most justified characters in this game. And I really enjoyed understanding her side of the story by playing half of the game as her and half of the game as uh, Ellie. I understood everything Ellie done. She wanted to get revenge for her killing Joel. She wanted to do everything and she learned in the end that, you know, killing Abby's not going to do anything. She understands where Abby's coming from and obviously on the other side of that we get to understand what Abby goes through, we get to see her humanity, we get to see that she isn't just this murderous villain which every game paints out to be. Um, it feels like when people don't really like this game which they're entitled to, it feels like the story which they wanted was just Joel and Ellie going on an adventure and fighting a bad person. Whereas I think this game does very well is that shows that Abby is not a bad person, Ellie is not a bad person, they just have their own priorities in this post-apocalyptic world. Um, right and wrong is extremely subjective in this and it's purely up to you know the, the, the player themselves to kind of show where their moral stand in this game. You know obviously you, you're forced to do stuff but you can disagree with those characters, there's nothing you know making you agree with those characters 
but the way the story plays out and how they you know put this story and convey it in the game to me is just incredible and honestly i've never played a game like it you can disagree with me but this game is a masterpiece in my opinion and uh, yeah it is my game of the year 2020 so i hope you guys uh, like my list obviously if you disagree let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about your top five favorite games of uh, 2020 this is my list you are entitled to your opinion and uh, i am entitled to mine so yeah be respectful of people's opinions in the comments obviously you can disagree with them just don't be rude to people uh, massive shout out to my members connor smith david yud why not one header rsa biggie pogchamp brian the owl dennis cool alonzo martinez zerp1234 movimento and xylator gaming guys thank you so much for watching i hope we all had a great christmas break and i hope we all have a great new year um yeah stay safe everyone i love you all and uh, yeah catch you next time